It's ah. happening. It's happening. It's happening. It is happening. Oh my God, it's finally happening, you guys. They made the announcement and Japan, after almost three years since 2020, is finally opening their borders for tourists. You guys can all come in in just a couple of weeks from at least now when I'm recording this. And you'll be able to come and explore and enjoy all of the amazing things of Japan that I have finally been able to do uh, as I came back about six months ago is when I moved into the country. You will all be able to join me in just a couple of weeks. So that's super, super exciting and way long overdue. So since the government was opening the borders, I thought, well, maybe now is a good time to release a video on like things that you should be aware of before coming to Japan. So this is just a quick little checklist of things to do before coming to Japan and a couple of tips for after you get here. Number one, before you come, make sure you double check with your local Japanese consulate or embassy in your country just to make sure that you have all the things that you need to speed through the process and make sure there's no troubles getting into Japan. So right now they're requiring all three vaccines for COVID. And if you haven't had all of the vaccines, they'll require a negative PCR test. Again, check with the local embassy or consulate in your country to find out exactly what you need before you book the tickets to come so it goes smoothly. Number two, 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 two. If you are flying into the Tokyo area, there are two options of airports for you to choose from. One of them is Haneda, which is properly in Tokyo. The other is Narita, which is out on the east side of Tokyo, uh, way near the ocean over there. Both airports are super accessible and easy to get into. The biggest difference is Haneda is much, much closer and the airport itself is a lot nicer with nicer amenities. So if you have to spend some time there, it's, it may be a nicer place to hang out. But the biggest thing to consider when coming in is price, if that's something that matters to you. Haneda will cost you quite a bit more to fly into than Narita. Quick update, I just did a quick check and I checked both Haneda and Narita round trip from Los Angeles. Angeles to each of those airports and right now if you're flying in November it looks like it's about the exact same price so make sure that you do check both airports before you commit to one you might get lucky and if Haneda is cheaper it is much closer in my experience it's almost double to fly into Haneda so I've almost never flown into Haneda I always end up flying into Narita which is not bad it's just a one-hour train ride from Narita into Tokyo uh, factor in about a $35 train ride from Narita into central Tokyo and back and uh, if that beats Haneda by a lot, then that's probably a pretty good choice if that matters to you. But yeah, Narita or Haneda are going to be your two options for airports flying into Tokyo. And now to number three. Once you have bought your tickets and you have gotten all your vaccine or PCR requirements, you are now on your way and you have landed, you are in Japan. The number one tip that I could give you is get a travel SIM card for your cell phone or a pocket Wi-Fi. I would personally opt for the travel SIM if I were you, just because you just pop that in, you've got one device to worry about with a pocket Wi-Fi. It lasts about eight hours, so you have to remember that's something else that you have to charge, and if it dies, you might be out of a phone. So I would lean towards the SIM card if possible, and if that's something that you can get. There are kiosks all over both airports as soon as you land. Get them in the airport. They're gonna be a lot more difficult to deal with or to get once you've left the airport. So get them at the airport. Then you have super reliable and fast Wi-Fi and internet all over Japan. You don't have to worry about it. Bad news for those of you who do have the new iPhone 14, as great of a phone as that may be, they did away with the SIM card tray and have gone to eSIM. And as of now, September 2022, the travel SIM card industry has not caught up to eSIM technology yet. They still are just giving out physical SIM cards. So if you got an iPhone 14 or newer or any phone that doesn't have a SIM card tray, uh, you're probably gonna have to go with the pocket Wi-Fi. You can always check with your home carrier and see if they have international plans that will work in Japan. Be warned, a lot of them will tell you that they do and then you get here and it is blisteringly slow. Like you can barely even load maps. So when you land at the airport, make sure you open your maps and open your Instagram or whatever apps you think you might need. Make sure you're okay with the speed time of what they load and if they seem to be good enough, you're good to go. If not, while you're at the airport, make sure you pick up a travel SIM or a pocket Wi-Fi. And now number four, just a little travel tip here and how you're going to get to the hotel. This is particularly if you've chosen Narita as your destination. So you've, you've got your vaccine PCR information, you've bought your tickets, you've landed in Japan, you have your SIM card or your pocket Wi-Fi. How do I get to Tokyo now? Easy enough, there are signs everywhere for the Narita Express. You'll see in, I think it's red letters, N-E-X posted everywhere, but also written in English, Narita Express. The $35 train that gets you from Narita into central Tokyo, and then from central Tokyo, it's pretty easy to either grab a taxi or take another train to get to your hotel destination. So Narita Express, keep that in mind. That's gonna be probably the best way to get into Tokyo from Narita. Number five or six. 
Did I forget what number we're on? But once you get into Tokyo, before you go off to your hotel, before you do any of that, while you're at the station, go to one of the ATM looking machines, not the actual ATM machine, but like the, the ticketing kiosks for the train. And there you will be able to buy a Pasmo or Suica card. And they look like this. These are your IC cards, they're your transportation cards. These are going to be loaded with money, which you will do at that kiosk. And um, these are gonna be used to get you all over Japan. These are your tap cards that you use to get on the trains, taxis, buses, basically all public transportation. You will use these cards in order to be able to access and get into that. On top of that, these work as cash cards. When you load money onto them, not only do they get you onto the trains and buses and taxis and all that stuff, if you go to convenience stores, if you go to restaurants, if you go to even, even department stores often, you can pay using your transportation card. So it's a really convenient way to pay and get yourself all over Tokyo because not all places in Tokyo take credit cards yet. And so having a loaded Suica or Pasmo card and they are identical. Don't worry about which one is better. They're literally the exact same thing. Even vending machines, most vending machines, you'll be able to use this to tap and get something to eat or drink at a vending machine all around Tokyo. So make sure you have one of these things. Top it up, keep it topped up at all times. So you're never without cash, which brings me to point number six or seven, where we're at now, and that is cash. Japan is still largely a cash-based society. Now, the recent pandemic that we went through did cause Japan to sort of push themselves into a world of contactless payment and more credit card options. So if you've traveled to Japan in the past, you will see it was almost entirely cash-based. And if you come now, you're gonna notice that there's a lot more options to either tap your, your IC cards, credit cards, and, and whatnot to be able to pay but you will run into situations where cash is the only option, especially if you go into smaller like ma and pa kind of restaurants, really local, small Japanese restaurants at Izakaya, you're going to be faced with cash options only at a lot of these places. So make sure that you have cash, bring a little bit of cash, convert it at the airport. The exchange rates are really, really pretty reasonable. And if you're coming from the US, I don't know about other countries, but if you're coming from the US right now, the exchange rate is like insane. $1 is something like 145 yen. So you're gaining almost 50% extra worth of money. So you have, your money will go a lot farther. You'll be able to spend a lot more and have a lot more fun on less money. If you're coming to Japan from the US, anytime in the relatively near future. Tip number seven or eight, wherever we're at right now, is bring your mask. Uh, you're probably gonna need the mask on the flight anyway. I'm pretty sure international flights are still requiring you to bring your mask with you. And when you get here, regardless of what country you came from, you will see that Japan is still very much a mask-based society. They wear masks before the pandemic was a thing. And then it just became even more prevalent when the pandemic hit, just like it did with all of us in our home countries. It just hasn't gone away yet. So make sure you bring your mask and above all, be respectful in places where it is evident that you need your mask, particularly on public transportation, if you're in taxis, buses, or trains, or if you go into a building, you're doing shopping, or you walk into a restaurant before you get to your table, make sure you're wearing their mask, just be respectful. You're gonna see everyone else is doing the same thing. So, so yeah, just do that. And once you've done all that, tip eight, nine, 10, wherever we're at, I don't know if this is just a tip, this is just an encouragement, go explore, enjoy, have fun. Prior to October 11th, which is when the borders are actually opening, you had to come with a tour group, and that wasn't very fun. People couldn't leave the tour group even to go across the street to get something that they wanted or to take a picture. You had to be in that tour group. Then they got rid of the tour group and said you could come, but if you did it through a travel agency and you still had to have an itinerary that you stuck to. So now they're actually opening it freely, normally, just like it was pre-pandemic. So come, enjoy, explore, go to all the foods, go to all the restaurants, go to all the temples, all the shrines, explore as much as you can. If you're here for long enough, try to take advantage of the JR Pass. I'll make another video about that. If you guys want me to, just smash like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below that that's something that you want. A little bit of tips and tricks, how to get around Japan. If you wanna explore more of the country besides just coming to Tokyo, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know by hitting that like button so I know that you guys are liking this video and I really like making them. So do that and get a conversation going down in the comments below and I will answer all of your questions and I will make a following video if that's what you guys want. So make sure that you enjoy as much as you can. Get out, meet the local people, go to the izakayas, go to all these really, really great spots, have a great time, and I will see you in about two weeks. Bye. Click here to see my travels in North Japan, the Tohoku region, or click over here and let YouTube pick a video for you.